A look at Firefox 2 and its fantastic add-ons today on Call for Help. Welcome to Call for Help. I am Elmer Leo Laporte Fudd, and this is the show where we help you understand technology, how it works, how to choose it, how to use it, how to abuse it, and uh, when you're done, how to lose it. That's, that's it, in four words. That's the whole show. This is episode 447. <laughs> May I introduce my lovely co-host of the moment, hey, Kelly Lewis. I've, I've tried to talk her to do it permanently, but she has this thing she does called Geek Brief TV. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> we can't get her up here all the time, but it's nice to have you up I'm here I'm not now. Canadian. That's another problem. We need a Canadian, but it's great to have you. It's Thank so nice you. to have you on the show. Is this your first time in Toronto? Yes, it is. How do you like it so far? Haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> we put you to work right away. Yeah. It's fun. You came up with your husband, Neil. Yeah, and, and we're, uh, in the, we're in a tiny little room. I, uh, I heard. Hotel room. I have to apologize to you <laughs> no, for that. No, it's, it's so cute. It's yeah. like the, the bed is here and the shower is here and the, the, the toilet is here. Yeah, so well, it's just it's everything. Very, it's good you know Neil well. <laughs> yeah, it's very exactly. close, very intimate. So what you got there? This is a toy that Mike Hogue brought uh, from um, uh, the big uh, graphics trade show. It's called SIGGRAPH. Mike is our flash guy. He's going to be here in a minute. And this is apparently something very rare, but he saw it and he said, I had to have it because, you see, it, it, matches, my, <laughs> it matches my shoes, you see. This is a flaming teapot. Actually, a walking teapot um, that they handed out. And there are apparently only a few thousand of these that they make every year. Isn't that cute? Look at that. <laughs> That's they very make cute. these every year and they hand them out to the attendees. And Aww. Mike was very generous. <laughs> He's giving me his Render Man walking teapot. Isn't that cute? Would you name it? Oh, I have to name it? Yes. Can you help me with a name? You no. have an idea? <laughs> Do you name your computer? Are you one of those people who names your computer? No, I haven't named my computer oh, yet. All right. Okay. That's a <laughs> There are people who do that. Callie's going to talk about something that you use with Neil. Your yes. writers, first and foremost, we should say that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Geek Brief is this great video podcast, but your writers really is what you want to do. We are. We are. Um, so we use an application called Rightly to well work named. on the script. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but it allows you to collaborate on a script even yeah. though you're not working on the same computer. Exactly. We can sit two feet away from each other and work on the same document at the same time, or you can be across country. Or okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, and uh, this is free from Google, so we're going to show it's you that. It's absolutely free. That's cool. Rightly's coming up. Also, Jay Goldman is here. You mentioned Firefox 2, yes. brand new, and we're going to show you uh, some of the new interface features, new tab bar, new search capabilities. So if you're if you're a Firefox user and if you watch the show, you ought to be because as you know, I keep I keep telling everybody, don't use Internet Explorer, use Firefox. What's new in two coming up? Michael Michael Glenn is also here. Well, we've got two we've got two Firefox experts here. Oh, this is exciting! I can't wait to see this. He's going to talk about extensions. There's some great add-ons. Oh, I hear the magic music. It's kind of like a ringtone. Our first call of the day. All right, we've got Denny via the webcam and on Ottawa, 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 <laughs> Ottawa Ontario. Ottawa, Ontario. Hello, Denny. How are you? Welcome to the show. Let me walk my little walking teapot okay. over. <laughs> Say hello to the great and talented Wizard of Oz, a.k.a. Basil Coward on camera number one. Hello. Now, can you hear me now, sir? Denny? Yes, I can there hear you. There he is. There he is. I see you. And now you hear me. What can I do for you today, Denny? Oh, my question was to do with uh, with Mac. Okay. Callie and I are both Mac aficionados. Go ahead, ask your question, Denny. Any question at all, I can answer it. And if I can't, Callie will be glad to. Well, it was uh -huh. to do with um, <laughs> yes, with spyware and uh, antiviruses. I was really wondering and considering um, going to buy a Mac. Ah, uh, you're a Windows user. I'm a Windows user. But I you're fed to, up. Hey? You're fed up with well, viruses. Lots of money. Well, not lots, but enough per year. I'm maintaining three computers for the family. Sure, sure. And, um... People often ask me, well, what antivirus do I need for my Mac? What spy, anti-spyware do I need for my Mac? And they're stunned when I say, nothing. 
Is Nothing. that really, really true, though? It's really, really true. Am I, am I wrong, Kelly? Am I lying to the man? You would trust Callie Lewis, wouldn't you? You're absolutely right. You don't, put yeah, you don't need anything. You don't need anything. And now, the question is why? And this is, a, this is a more difficult question. Partly it's because of the way the operating system is designed. Windows is, unfortunately, old technology. I mean, XP itself is already five years old. And in order to maintain compatibility with software written for earlier versions of Windows, Microsoft could not do many of the things uh, that requ were required to make it secure. So really, it's inherently insecure. I'm not just talking about bugs and holes, because every operating system has bugs and holes and exploits and ways for bad guys to get into them. But, but I'm talking about just the inherent underlying way it does things is actually kind of inviting to spyware. On the other hand, OS X was designed from the ground up. I mean, one of the things Apple's very good at is saying to its previous users, nanner, nanner, neener, you can't use this. You probably went through this at some point too, Callie, where they say, you know, the old computers, you're not, not going to work with OS X. And, you know, they phased out OS 9. If you had an OS 9 program, the original previous operating system, you wouldn't be able to run it on any of the new Macs. But, in, but by doing that, Apple was able to say, uh, hey, uh, we can make this secure, we can change the way things work, we don't have to worry about working with these older programs. So when a, when a pro and I'll give you an example, one of the reasons the spyware just doesn't happen on the Mac side, when an, a, a program, an, uh, anything needs to modify the operating system, it asks for a password, it asks for an administrator password, and it will not go any farther until you give it by hand the administrator password. If Windows did that, guess what, no spyware. In fact, the best way, to, you can run Windows without having spyware problems, or at least really minimizing spyware problems, by not running as administrator. The problem is when you do that, it's a lot harder to use Windows. There are all sorts of things you can't do. Windows, even though you shouldn't be able to, shouldn't be running as administrator, Windows doesn't encourage that. Now, the next version of Windows Vista, which is out any day now, a couple of months, will apparently, it's hard to say, but we think will fix that will be much more like Mac and in that it'll ask for a, a password before you can operate system, uh, change system files, things you know, like that. You know, as it is, uh, with, with the Mac um, that I'd be interested in, I, I have to ask you, the, the Mac that, that comes with Windows, no spyware there either? Well, okay, when you, now, it doesn't come with Windows, by the way, you have to buy Windows, but it is capable of running Windows. When you run Windows on a Mac, spyware! Spyware. It's operating specific. It's not specific to the hardware. It's specific to the operating system. Now, there is another reason why Apple is not as prone to spyware and viruses as Windows, because it's a much smaller part of the marketplace. Only a few percentage points. If this, if this were to become the dominant operating system. If everybody were using Apple's, I think you would start seeing spyware and virus. People would figure out a way. But right now, the virus authors, it's much more efficient for them to hack Windows because 95% of all computers are Windows computers. They get you know, many more positive hits. So partly it's because Apple is less prone to spyware and viruses, partly because it's less of a target. However, for whatever reason, if you were to go out today and buy a Macintosh, uh, you wouldn't have to worry about spyware and viruses. If you were to run Windows on it, you would, but the good news is if you run Windows using something like Parallels, which is a virtual technology, and you get spyware or viruses, you just throw it out. You don't have to worry about it. You start over again. It's, not, it's, 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 it's virtualized. It's not, it's not going to take over your system. You don't have to reinstall as you would here. Now, with the Macs, you don't, you don't have to reboot all the time like uh, with a regular PC. Eh? Well, let me ask Callie. Do you have to reboot all the time, Callie, uh, like you do with a PC? Um, I don't have to reboot as often, but yeah, of course you still you have do. to reboot. Yeah. Once in a while, you'll have a crash. I think it's more... XP's pretty good. The problem really on the Windows side is not so much the operating system, but there's so many different kinds of hardware. And Microsoft cannot test on every kind of hardware. There's so many different programs, so many different kinds of hardware. Some of the hardware, frankly, is not very well made because the margins, one of the reasons a Windows computer costs less is because of all the competition. The margins are lower. They, the way they scrimp and save is by making, frankly, components that are subpar. Uh, Apple's the only company that makes Macs. So the, the, they're a little more expensive, but the quality components are in there. So I think that's part of the reason a Mac might be a little bit more reliable. I think XP inherently is, is reliable it's in its design. Um, but because it runs on a lot of different kinds of hardware platforms, it's harder to make it reliable. Lots of different drivers. It's a much more complex environment. I, you know, for a home user, if you, if, if you were my mom, Denny, yeah. and by the way, uh, you, you're, not, you're not as good looking as my mom, but if you were my mom, <laughs> and your gnocchi probably isn't as good, but if you were my mom, I would say get a Mac. In fact, I did. 
Oh, um, for my other children, for my two children's computers, right? Get a Mac. And between mine, between having to yeah, you don't want to do take that. Take care of all three of them. It's just and the, and the, the money I spend also, but it's that time. Yeah, you know, I agree. I, I, don't, got, I feel uh, sorry for people who have to sh sh uh, suffer with this. You, you, to, to, if you're going to use Windows, you kind of have to be a security expert. I don't think you should have to do that. So, yes, get a Mac. You won't have those problems. At some point, we may start having problems like that. I don't think they'll ever be as bad. Apple is inherently more secure, more reliable. But, but since Mac, like you said, like, like you've just explained, since Mac has been on top of this more, more like from the beginning, like you, you, as they progressed, they were probably stronger. I think so. I think so. Well, it remains to be seen what Vista is going to be, the next version of Windows. I'm excited for Vista, too, because I really love XP. I do. Well, you might, you know, Vista, boy, if you like XP, you'll love Vista. Uh, it might be worth waiting to see what happens in a couple of months when Vista comes out. Well, yeah, is there a for sure date out on Vista yet? Uh, it is. It has, by the time you see this, it will have gone to manufacture. So they're stamping out the discs right now. And we expect that businesses will get a copy of it any day now. And it'll be in the stores in January. Here's the good news. Probably by the time you see this, which, which will be in the middle of October, late October, uh, you will be able to, when you buy a new PC, it will have Vista pre-installed or not pre-installed, it will have a coupon for Vista. It won't be till January you'll have it pre-installed. So if you're willing to do the upgrade, you'll get a free upgrade starting, I would say, in middle to late October. Uh, again, we're, we're taping this in early October, so I'm not sure exactly when that date will be. And then Janu early, early 2007, right around January is when you'll start seeing the machines. I think it might be worth waiting, Denny, but I tell you, I'm so happy. Welcome back to Call for Help. I'm Leo Laporte. You know we love Firefox. It's the alternative browser, the alternative to Internet Explorer that's safer, easier to use, has a lot of great features. And, of course, the great folks at Firefox are not sitting on their laurels. They've uh, constantly improved the product, and now here it comes, Firefox 2.0. We're joined in the studio by Jay Goldman of Radiant Core, the uh, team that did a lot of the user interface design for the new version of That's right. Firefox. Yeah. Laurels are very uncomfortable to sit on, actually. <laughs> Have you ever sat on laurels? I, I try not to. Yeah, ow. Yeah. You know, just don't, don't sit on. So uh, this is important. First of all, Firefox is an open source project, so That's there are right. a lot of people who work on it from mm -hmm. all over the world. Uh, Radiant Core is a desi web design firm? That's right. We do a bunch of different things. One of the things we do is web design. We work with some companies like Mozilla on their applications like Firefox. Uh, we do you do that pro bono? And... Just kind of Actually, out of the no. Good... This was, a, they this paid was you. a paying job, yeah. There's um, a little money in Firefox. People don't know that. But there, is, there is actually a lot of money in Firefox. <laughs> it turns out, because they've got that Google search bar there, there's actually some uh, referral fees that they right. get from Google. Enough, certainly to uh, go out and, and pay some people. Now, why do you feel like that they, they didn't do this with their existing core developers? You know, th there are some fantastic software developers who work on the Firefox project, but they're software developers. And one of the People like Ben Goodger, who did a lot of the UI Absolutely. previously. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, and I believe Mike Shaver has been on your show mm -hmm. a number of times in the past. One of the general failings of open source software, one of the areas that's the weakest, is actually in the design area. It's really hard to get designers to work on open source stuff, and right. I'm not sure why that is necessarily. Well, engineers but, love it because they're programming. Right. But for a designer, it's a little tougher. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so sometimes open source projects will go outside and they'll actually, you know, bring right. on designers to work on things. So they put together a team internally, Mozilla, and they said, we're going to bring on some outside companies and we're going to have them give us some proposals for what they would see Firefox 2 looking like. And so there was a bit of a sort of open competition and uh, us along with two other firms. And you we were won. chosen to continue. Congratulations. One of the things that's kind of funny to think of is that 
a browser which is supposed to display, display websites would have a web design firm design the browser. Exactly. Yeah. But in fact, if you think about it, it, it is kind of part of the experience. It's an important part. Definitely. And we've actually got a background in usability as well. So we worked with the usability team at Mozilla, uh, Mike Beltzner and some of the other guys there, mm -hmm. to make sure that what we were doing wasn't just another pretty face, but was actually improving the usability of the browser. Let's the take a look. This is Firefox. 2.0. Right, so we're actually running at the moment a nightly build of Firefox 2. Okay, that's the uh, most recent version. Actually, that's not it. That looks a little bit more like, there we go. <laughs> there we <laughs> go. Showing Internet Explorer there briefly. <laughs> that's what you're not using. Right. This is what you would right. be using. We didn't cleverly make it look like Internet Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is on a Mac, but obviously it's exactly the same. It on is, Windows. it is. And in fact, oh, or Linux. And in fact, on Linux. It's not exactly the same on Windows. One of the things that we did with this version was to make sure that the icons were a little bit more themed to the operating system. So, what oh, you're seeing here is actually what's known as the pinstripe theme or the Mac theme. The icons on Windows use the XP color palette a little bit more and some of the styling cues that come out of XP. Okay, you could probably change themes though. You I mean, can. You, yeah. In fact, the browser is completely themable. So one of the interesting things we get when you know previews of this came out and that kind of thing, there were people who loved it and there were people who absolutely hated it. And the people who hated it get really upset about it. And then we sort of point out to them, you know, it's, it's just the default it. theme. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a themable browser. If you don't <laughs> you like know, it, by all want. means, please, you know, go and replace it. I promise not to be personally offended <laughs> if you go out and replace well, it. Something so, like. so show us what else is there. So we've done a couple of things here. One of the things that you'll notice right away is, in fact, the icons up here. That's yeah. an entirely new They're set. Pretty, I like them, if yeah. we uh, jump into the customize, you'll see actually we've done all of the icons for the full thing. When they said do all of the icons, we said sure, no problem, and then we realized that that's actually several hundred icons. There are a lot but, of them. You know that's okay. So we've redone all of the icons all the way through, and so you get new icons up here. We've also done a couple things here, like the go button is now attached to the end of the address bar here, and so it looks a bit more like the default action for the address right. bar. Right, that's and a good thing. One yeah. of the things that's really changed is, in fact, the search UI here, and you'll see we've gone on the Mac anyway with the rounded corners, which on a Mac indicate that it's a search box. We're also using the operating system native magnifying glass right. here. And so on Windows, it would look something different. but Right, in Windows, it's a bit more the, of a square. The functionality will be the same. Exactly. And you have changed the functionality. We have, the yeah. Something that a lot of people didn't know about the earlier version of Firefox is that you actually have a choice of search engines here. And this isn't something that's new, although this has been greatly enhanced in Firefox, too. And so if I want to search Yahoo directly, I can just switch this over to being a Yahoo search. So from now on, when you type something in there, it goes to Yahoo. Right, exactly. And so if I, for example, wanted to search for something on eBay, I mm -hmm. could do that. And I can also go into the Manage Search Engines here, and I can move things up and down so I can say actually I'd prefer Yahoo to be my default search. And I can also click on the Get More Search Engines, and that'll take me up to part of the add-ons website where I've got a whole range of search engines. So I'm actually going to, Mike's going to talk a little bit more about this in, when he talks to you in a few moments. About Those are add-ons, add yeah. But, yeah. Um, so there are actually a whole bunch of other search engines which are available. All right, so we've got uh, enhanced search. Is it, is it changed in other ways? One of the big areas that we focused on was the tab strip, and the tab strip is the part of the window which actually contains the tabs. So you'll see right now we've got three tabs open. This is one of the reasons people switch to Firefox, is it the is, ability yeah. to tab these Tabbing's ones. coming in Internet Explorer 7. They've right. done, obviously, their own take on it. It's a little bit different. Right. But we spent a whole bunch of time on enhancing the usability here. So one of the things we did on the Mac, and if you're a previous Mac user of Firefox, you'll notice the background tabs are a little bit different. In mm -hmm. the previous version, they just looked like part of the tab strip. They right. didn't actually look like tabs. So we've- You've we've, refined the look quite a bit. Exactly. So. We've also added close buttons on every tab. Oh, that's it. Now, the close button was always there, but it was always on the far right. Right. There was one close button off to the right, right. so now we've added them on every tab. That's more Mac-ish. It is, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And if you open up a whole bunch of tabs, those will go away to save space. So okay. if we just kept opening up tabs, eventually the tabs buttons just drop off of right. all of the tabs. Right, right. We've also given you the ability, and this is a very popular feature, to drag and drop tabs. So I can reorganize my oh, tabs, and you'll hallelujah. see <laughs> as I'm dragging them, I get a little green arrow to show me where they're going. Because I often save tag space, uh, tab spaces right. so I can reopen them all at once. So the ability to reorder them is actually pretty important. Yeah, so you can drag those around, and you can put pages that are related right next to each other and that right. kind of thing. We've also given you this great little menu here, which gives you the list of open tabs, so you can actually jump back and forth between the tabs that you've got Very open. Very nice. And we've given you something which we call overflow. So if I keep opening up tabs here, you'll see at this point, we now get little arrows here. And that lets me scroll mm. back and forth between my tabs. If I had a mouse here that had a scroll wheel, and I was in that, and mm -hmm. I started scrolling, it would actually scroll back and oh, forth neat. quite smoothly. Okay. And you can actually, there's a neat little animation here. If I uh, keep opening links, I'll get a little flash in the top right corner there to indicate that that had opened actually and, off of screen. Ah, oh, so I knew that it uh, was yeah. there. So, so that's right down here at the it, end. Got it. Well, you know, of course, there's a lot of stuff under the hood that's new, but the way it looks is really how we see uh, a new Definitely. program. Uh, it's, it's subtle. It's not gonna. It's not gonna knock you over. You're not gonna say, "Oh, this is oh, this is all different. I can't use it." But there are some very 
useful cosmetic right. improvements. Yeah. It was intended to be what we were referring to as an evolution rather than a revolution. Right. So we didn't want to alienate people, we just wanted them to feel comfortable and this is still a web browser, it's what you've come to expect, but we've just cleaned up some of the things which were a little harder to use before. Some of the things that are actually under the hood which are fantastic in this version is spell checking and text fields built into the browser. Again, Mac people don't need that, but Windows people will love right. it. Yep. And session restore. So if your browser crashes, for example, when it opens back up, it'll ask you if you want to open up all the tabs oh, that you great. had open and all I that. I use thing. an extension for that now, but it'd be nice to have right. that built in. Uh, and a hidden little thing in the tab strip, actually, if you double click in the empty tab bar, it'll make a new tab for you. I That's like that. a little power tip <laughs> like for your that. viewers. Not there you go. Right Nobody one. knows about that. All right. If you want to uh, try out Firefox 2, it's available now. GetFirefox.com is the place to go. And uh, it, it, by the time you see this, it will either be almost ready to ship or shipping. We're not sure yet. Fingers crossed. We're very close. Jay Goldman is the president of Radiant Core Technologies. They've been working closely with the Mozilla Corporation to update and uh, redesign Firefox 2. And it looks like they've done a beautiful job. Now, Thank you. we're not done yet. You can learn more about Radiant Core at RadiantCore.com or in our show notes, callforhelptv.com. We're going to learn about the add-ons just a little bit from your colleague. Meanwhile, right now, check out our daily Next Tech quiz question of the day. Our question today, what's the code name for Intel's new quad-core processor? If you thought four processors was a lot, how about eight processors? That's what's on the new quad-core. Is it a Hillsborough, a Merrim? Actually, if you had two of them, it would be, never mind. A Kentsfield or a Nipawa? Is that in Canada? Get to the website, give us the answer, and we'll talk about it. we we'll call for help. Continue. back to Call for Help. Kelly, I hope people are now thinking because Amber was such a Mac fan and now you're clearly a Mac fan that we only allow Mac fans on the show. <laughs> this is not the case, right? I'm sure it's not. I'm sure you will allow somebody who, who loves Windows. I didn't quiz you. I didn't say, is she a Mac fan first? I didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't part of the uh, the requirements. But I, I think I, you know, I'm not against Windows by any no. means. Do you do you use Windows at all though, at home or anything like that? Well, I had two, and they just kept sh shutting down on me, and right. so they've just been shipping out of the house. <laughs> I think that that's a lot of times what happens. You know, I guess my rule of thumb is Windows is for business, absolutely. Absolutely, all the business software is Windows focused. But when you get in the home environment, a lot of the things you want to do, Apple comes with that software already. It works better. It's all integrated things like video and, and, and audio and art and photos. And they just, it, without spyware and viruses, it just makes it a much easier experience for the home user. So I encourage home users to uh, stick with the Macs. And Windows, you know, it's fine. I mean, and I think Vista, we will, look, the jury's still out on Vista. We, we will, I've already installed it at home. I'll be using it heavily. We'll be talking about it more and more as we get closer to its launch. With any luck, it will be as good, robust, and reliable an operating system as, as OS X. And that's great. Then we'll have a choice, which is always good. A choice is a good thing. So, Callie, do we have a, a caller on the line? Here? We do. And they are on the webcam. His name is Ron from Pembroke, Ontario. Well, thank you, Callie. Hello, Ron. How are you today, sir? Hey, Leo. Good. How are you? I'm hey, Amber. wonderful. Actually, Amber's not here now. Oh. Amber, Amber has moved on. I finally chased her out, as I do all <laughs> All my co-hosts eventually. No she way. Actually, yeah, she got a great job at City TV. In oh, fact, you for her. watch I, her. On yeah, the, I used to watch you when you were down. I guess it was San Francisco. Yeah, remember I chased a few uh, co-hosts out yeah, there too. Yeah, with Sarah and the other bunch. Okay, can we not rub it in, Ron? <laughs> But well, Callie's here. Just, I'm glad you're here now. <laughs> Callie's just here for the month. Oh, uh, by the way, you can tell her I use Windows. Oh, Callie, see, he's a uh, Windows user. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you, so Ron? So far, so good. Anyways, uh, I own a little business here in Pembroke. It's uh, All Star Computers. I get a lot of people it's come in with their machines Trek. and no license key on the machine. Yeah. Windows is corrupt. I can get into DOS. How can I find a Windows key or a product key in DOS? That's a really interesting question. You know, I, uh, there are uh, an umpteen number of programs that will do it in Windows, of course. I've downloaded a couple here. Um, there's one that Andy Walker used to recommend called ProduKey. Uh, that recovers the lost Windows product key. The one I would actually recommend is this SIW from uh, GTOPALA.com. Uh, it's uh, a system information manager. Uh, I've shortened the uh, number, but look, it's not just Windows, but it's got all the serial numbers, the usernames, it'll come up with passwords, and it, this actually, any computer store should absolutely have this. It's absolutely free. It's called System In Info from Topala. Gabriel Topala. I'm sorry, that's the one that was from GTOPALA.com. Um, 
But a DOS one, let me think. If I don't know if of any, there must be some DOS ones that do it. Now, these, now this system info will work over the network. Um, but you need something that will see in, I guess you, you're right. not going to be able to. When you fire up DOS, if, you, if Windows is corrupt. Yeah, if you can't get into it, how are you going to get the key out of there? It's in the registry. There's got to be a way to do it. Well, I'm sure, <laughs> you know, there is, I just don't know of one. I'm sure there is a uh, Windows key recovery program for DOS. Let's see if we can find one. View key XP recovery from DOS or recovery console is not possible as far as I know. Hmm. Maybe it is harder to do. You I know, most of these programs are already using, are using the, um, uh, uh, the operating system to read into the registry. And I think it's probably something that you can't do if the operating system isn't running because it's such a the re, this is why I don't like the registry uh, uh -huh. it's a ball of data a gluey ball of data that is very it's not text it's not you know it's a binary file it's very hard to see into Mike do you know of any DOS based uh, key recovery all of these ones that I've seen are uh, Windows maybe uh, maybe a Linux program well could that's do what it. I was thinking is there a way of putting it into Linux and then pulling it out of the registry that way or maybe copying the registry files off and with Linux and then going uh. to another Windows machine Oh, that, well, but then you, hmm. You know, there certainly are, with Nopix and a number of other uh, live CD versions of Linux, there are ways to, for instance, recover the lost password. Um, let me see if there's a way to do it in Linux. I, you know, I'll, I, guess, I guess the answer, Ron, is I don't know of a way to do it without booting uh, into Windows. So, yeah, I just run across it quite often. It's yeah, that makes sense that you would, because, of course, you know, if they it's don't have their enough, license, they never have their driver CDs or something yeah, like that's that. Right, that's right. That's right. for drivers, but let me look at. There are a number of really good um, Windows uh, Linux-based Windows recovery disks, like EBCD. Okay. You, this is one you should have anyway. The Emergency Boot CD. Uh, the uh, page is ebcd.pcministry.com. If anything were to do it, it probably would be this. This is a okay. this is a Linux boot that just. When you in install it, has a bunch of useful system recovery stuff, um, and I just don't know if it, if one of the things it will do recover master boot record, copy files, change password, recover deleted files. Doesn't look like it gets the license keys, but it's one to look at. You huh? should probably have it anyway in your shop. It's the kind of thing uh, I tell every geek they ought to make one of these before they lose Windows because yeah. it's one of the best ways to recover or at least get data off of the Windows drive. Yeah, I know I use Ada a lot. Yeah, Ada's that's a good. Very handy tool, yeah. that one. Yeah, Boy, that's a really good question. Let me see if we can find a, a console-based recovery tool. The fact that one, I, one doesn't you know, leap to mind means it may be that it's a very, very difficult thing to do. Without Windows help to parse the registry is probably extremely huh. tricky. Um, I don't know of any, for instance, DOS-based registry hack tools. In fact, I, you know, the console could see the NTFS disk, but I don't know if it can see into the registry. Let me, let me look and see if we can find something for you, Ron. Okay, thank I, you. I A guess lot of the times, answer too, they have it formatted uh, FAT32. Right, right. But so it wouldn't be NTFS. Right. Um, but the console could see it either way. The real question is, can it see into the registry? And I don't know of anything that can, but we'll, we'll look and see if we can find it. Because that's where that key is hidden. So you've got to kind of parse the registry and say, ah, here's the key. There it is. Yeah. Ron, good luck. I, like, I think you're a Trekker, aren't you? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, he's got the Star Trek well, logo I have there. you on the line. I just want to say my daughters will love it. Hi, Nicolette. Hi, Brianna. Hi, Nicolette. Hi, Brianna. I love you for that. Thanks, Leo. Ron's at work. <laughs> Daddy's at work. How old are they? Uh, Nicolette is seven, Brianna's five. Oh, what a cute age. I've got, can a four, be. I've got a 14 year old, believe me, enjoy it while you got it. Yeah, it seemed like yesterday <laughs> were zero. <laughs> All right. Hey, Ron, we'll take to, talk to you later. And keep watching, because if we can find an answer, we'll let you know before the end of the show. I appreciate that, Leo. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Take bye bye. Care. Coming up next, we've all had to collaborate on projects with co workers, sometimes co workers in another country. Wouldn't it be nice if you could share documents, have that document that uh, you have on your desktop available to you on the road, on the web? Callie Lewis from Geek Brief TV will show you how she and her husband work together on their scripts, even though they're four feet apart. It works, that, it works in the same room, too. Coming up right after this. Stay right here.
Welcome back to Call for Help. Picture, if you will, a couple, a young couple working on their own video podcast. He's in the living room. She's in the bedroom. They're working together on a script. <laughs> How do they share that data? Hey, honey, paragraph four needs a rewrite. <laughs> no, that's not the modern world. They use Rightly.com. Rightly's bringing about some big changes in the world of word processing. You may not ever have to buy another copy of Microsoft Word if you don't want to. Callie Lewis is going to show us how she and her husband, Neil, use it to create Geek Brief TV. Yeah. It's a collaboration so it's, tool for you. It's a collaboration tool, and it's also, since it's online, you can pull up the same document on any computer. I, there are several times where I've been at somebody's house, a friend's house, and I needed access to that document. So, so they're saved just, on, uh, Google owns them, they bought them. Correct. So the, the documents are not saved in your high drive, they're saved exactly. on Google servers. Right. Oh, interesting. So, you know, a lot of times it's on one computer, and you have two or three computers in your right. house, right. so then you can just grab it anywhere you are. And you guys do all your scripts in this? We do, we do. Um, if now, you you're take professional a look, writers. I mean, writing is what you do. So you find this is sufficient for the, the work that you Absolutely. need to do? Absolutely. Because what we're doing is just writing a script. The, it, it's not for very, you know, Presentations, it's messy, elaborate yeah. formatting. There are okay. no templates. Right. So it's not, even though, you know, we, we say, it, it, you don't have to buy a copy of Microsoft Word right. ever again if you don't want to. If you do a lot of templates and formatting and revision huge, checking, that kind of stuff. You right, know, yeah. yeah. It's you it's probably not there yet. But I think it's it's it on looks its way. pretty complete, I have to say. I'm looking oh, at it. Oh absolutely. Yeah. And um here's the script that, that he's working he's actually writing he's on writing the hotel one right room. Now. <laughs> yeah. And so usually he has some some spelling errors. Is he a bad <laughs> so, speller? Yes. Well, <laughs> he doesn't mind me telling but that. But you're a good speller. I I'm pretty good. You're the yeah. speller in the family. So so I can change something and I can say, <laughs> um, and he'll see that right away. Right away. It, it, well, it's it's near alive. It's see there. It said it was oh, just up saving. in the right. It said save mm -hmm. up in the up But you in that also, faint text. if you uh, you need to update, you can just do this. Update so if he were to right type there. something, and I hope he knows that when we say he we're shooting, we're on camera. Does. He would, if he's going to type <laughs> something. He will. Well, you could refresh it, and it would show up there. Yeah, right. exactly. Okay. It, it, you can refresh it like right away, or it'll do, it'll it, do it within a second or two seconds. Cool. That's really neat. So you can also. It's, I see it has spell checking too. So. Right. Right. Look, at, these are all your documents. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can. Uh, do you write love letters to each other sometimes? <laughs> Not that's unrightly. Geeky. That is geeky. <laughs> So you can upload a Microsoft Word document, oh, and so we'll do that here. So, you could, so if you had a template, you could start with a template from a Word document. Absolutely, and you can call it whatever you want. And this is actually <laughs> Matt from Torrent yeah. <laughs> gave this to me. So this is the Torrent script? Yeah, because okay. I actually don't have Word installed on my computer. Really? I don't. You don't need to? No, I don't need to. I don't have any use for it. So you can actually just open that up, and it and pulls it, it right up. You can actually also save your documents as PDFs or Word documents. So you um, could share them with somebody. You can share them. So you can collaborate. You I can see add. it as cut, paste, print, spell check. Absolutely. It has basic formatting, huh? Basic formatting. It doesn't have anything too complicated. Bullet points numbered. Right. Does it do page uh, numbering, that kind of thing? Um, not that I've found. Okay. So it's simpler. So For it's very long simple. documents, it might not be the yeah. ideal. And, and I just got an email from a guy who, with his friends, with a group of like five friends, wrote a book on Rightly. You could, because yeah. you can see what their changes it's are It's incredible. And so forth. Because he said he, they started to start trying to write a novel on iChat. Oh, which, that would be hard. Uh, to that do. would be very hard. But you, and you do this for all your scripts. What, we do. Are there any issues that have come up? Like, do you sometimes if he changes something and you change it at the same time, does that cause a problem? There are occasionally the, the small chance that you are changing the same sentence at the same time, right. and it'll tell you whoever got there first. It'll tell the other person. Sorry, you that, lose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sorry, lose. Neil. Yeah. Got there first. Can we see if Neil's so, written anything back to you? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, it has Let's tabs, see. so you can. Or no, that's the browser. This tab, so you can yeah. keep other documents open. Oh yeah, there he. Yeah. It, I keep rewriting my paragraphs. It's easier when you're in the same room. But now that's what I find interesting. Even though you're in the same room, you will use this on two different computers as you work together. Well, that way we can, because he can write a story or I can write a story and he can edit or I can edit so that it's more efficient. It right. takes a lot less time than 
writing a whole script, then going back and editing, right. and then, you know, a second edit. So you can iterate through your process. Absolutely. Well, we better wrap this up, because okay. I think Neil misses you. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get Callie back so Neil can write episode uh, 75 <laughs> of Geek Brief. To learn more about Callie's sweet tech video podcast, visit geekbrief.tv. I'll confess, I'm a... I'm a, I'm a viewer. I watch it all the time, and I think you'll <laughs> like it. For more information and links to Rightly, which is free from Google, absolutely, head over to callforhelptv.com. Let's see what they're writing up in the control room as we uh, take a break. We'll be right back. Right. Nine, Nine, Welcome back to Call for Help. I'm Leo Laporte. Callie Lewis is here all month. We're so glad to have her. Tell Neil we appreciate uh, stealing his writing partner from him. I'm but with sure. Rightly, see, you don't. You could be doing the show, and he could still be working. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I'm t secretly you doing now? it right now. Are you actually writing? <laughs> right now. Oh man. <laughs> hey, who do we have on the phone here? We have Ronald uh, from Surrey, British Columbia. He's on the webcam. All right. Hey, Ronald. How are you today? Hey, Leo. Hi, Amber. How you doing? Uh, we're great. It's Callie instead of Amber. I have to explain that to everybody, but that's well, I suppose right? it's I'll worth doing. With Amber, but well, we miss Amber. You know, she's gone on to bigger and better things. She's gone on to City TV. But we well, were that's too bad. Well, not too bad for City TV. Too bad for me, though. Well, that's <laughs> but, true. But but we're very happy to have Callie Lewis here from Geek Brief TV, who's doing a great job. And and this is just for the month, but uh, we should have a, a full time replacement for Amber uh, starting uh, about three or four weeks. It takes us a little while, you know to get well, over our good. tears. So what can I do for you, Ronald? I have a question, actually. I bought one of the new Intel iMacs uh, when they first came out, 20-inch. Mm -hmm. And I'm running, I have both operating systems on there with Boot Camp. Yep. And my question is, I had two gaming PCs. I got rid of one of them, so I moved my Mac out of the bedroom into the front room here on my desk. Okay. Now I have a direct landline hooked up, and I also have the wireless connection. Now, can I use both of them? Because I remember... If you remember a couple of years ago, there used to be a diamond multimedia modem that you shotgun. could use two yeah. phone lines. I think they called it shotgun. Shotgun, yep. And can that be done using the airless connection and uh, the uh, LAN cable to speed up the internet connection? So what is your Wi-Fi connected to? My Wi-Fi is connected to a router that I have here. And that goes to the same cable modem? or The same cable modem, the same router, yep. So there would be no benefit whatsoever? The only way that that would help, it, it made sense with a dial-up modem that you could have two phone lines and maximize each phone line. But really, if you think about it now, Ronald, all your, it's all going to the same pipe. It's not like you have two separate cables to the outside world. You have one cable. That's the, that's the thing that's slowing you down, not the, not the routers on, on the Y. You've split them off into a Y. So right. there's no advantage to shotgunning those two they all they come down to the same thing and they're and they're faster than the thing is the thing the bottleneck you only got one of anyway and that's your cable modem or your DSL modem shotgunning worked because you had two lines you'd have you'd have a uh, two phone lines even then by the way it didn't work all that well and it only worked with the cooperation of the ISP who would divide your data up between the two lines uh, in other words, you're not going to get anything. But the truth is, even if you did, you already you, aren't you happy with the speed of your? What do you have? A cable modem or DSL? Oh no, I've got the high-speed uh, cable. Yeah, I so, mean that's already. I mean, it's great. I just thought we could get a few more ponies out of this. Yeah, you're not going to get any more ponies because the same number of ponies coming in, and just well, <laughs> just because you divide I mean, them up and then the bring shot, them together. Because, like I said, I remember the shotgun modem, but right. I know yeah. it needed two lines. But I thought, well, if I'm Moving twice as much information to the to the router, I mean, right. you would figure to speed it up, but I guess yeah, it's yeah. not gonna, is it? It's as fast it's as fast as it's gonna be, and I, and the truth is, it's pretty fast, isn't it, Ronald? Oh, it is. It's yeah. very quick. Yeah. I mean, I'm very happy with it. But yeah. I just thought, hey, a couple more cubic inches, you Why know, get us there a little quicker. More power. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, that's thanks. right. Thanks, Ronald. Is there I, any chance of getting an autographed picture of you and Amber? Uh, sure is. Hang on the line. I'm going to see Amber tonight. I'll make sure she autographs one for you. Just hang on the line. We'll get your much. address. Have a great day. And, and we'll get Callie to autograph one, too, for you. Because I think you're going to want Callie's. When she's a big, rich, and famous star, you're going to say, ah, uh, who's, I don't know who that Leo and Amber are, but see who I got? Callie Lewis. Men and women have scoured the earth looking for the best blog editor for centuries. They've searched from the deserts to the Middle East to the tropical rainforests in South America. But as we all know, Mike is very 
efficient. And the only searching he does, he's efficient, is on the web. <laughs> In fact, if he can't do it from bed, he's not going to do it. Luckily, he's found a great blog editor for a free file of the day. Yeah, it's called Windows uh, Live. Um, Windows Live. It's Microsoft. It's the new yeah. Windows Live blog Live editor. Live blog editor. Sorry. <laughs> I don't blame you for forgetting. That's such an obscure <laughs> name. That's a really bad name. But anyhow. You had a drink for lunch, did you? No, I didn't. little sake? I wish. <laughs> um, but what's cool about this blog editor is that it's, it's free first off, and there's not very many free ones out there for Windows. People um, are raving over this. This is really neat. And I have actually the, the greatest reason why for using this. Do you have to use Windows Live blog, though? Um, no, you don't. You can hook it up with your WordPress, your TypePad, your blogger. So it'll work with all of those tra traditional blogs. Exactly. But the coolest feature with this particular free file is the fact it gives you a live preview of what it looks like on your blog. Ooh. So what's cool about this is when you're lining pictures or you're putting certain things in there, That's really helpful. you need to make sure it lines up properly. Yeah. And I end up sometimes with other editors blogging four or five times on a single entry Me too. to Constantly. make sure to make yep. sure it fits up or looks right. And so this is actually you could actually see this is my previous blog template. I can get a new version in a second. Um, and it, it uh, so you can automatically see what it looks like within my template that was on my blog that's before. Neat. It's live. And it's live. Maybe that's why they call it. Windows Live Blog Editor. And it has all the normal features, spell check, insert pictures, insert links. Um, and it's free. And it's free. From Microsoft. Yeah. It's part of their new Windows Live thing. You know, I have to say, they're doing some cool things with the long line. Are you ready to add some life to your Firefox experience? Perhaps you have a few tabs you can't live without. We're going to give you the latest tips on updating your browser experience with the brand new Firefox 2. But first, one last chance to take our quiz question of the day from Next Tech. What is the code name? for Intel's new quad-core processor. See, I've got the dual core, but if I got the quad core, I'd actually have eight instead of four. It's, what do I need? Do I need a Hillsboro, a Merrim, a Kentsfield, or a Nipawa? Get right back in just a minute or two, we'll tell you the answer as Call for Help continues. Welcome back to Call for Help. Before the break, we asked you, what Intel is going to call its new quad-core processor? Now, we already had the Merrim. I don't think it's the Hillsboro, although uh, I think it's the Kentsfield. That would be my guess. The, can I be right? The Kentsfield. It is, uh, it is the next Xeon that it will have, believe it or not, four processors in each chip. Right now, they've got two in each chip with the, uh, the uh, Core 2 chips, including the new Xeon. That's amazing, isn't it? It's getting all that power in that little bitty chip. As we mentioned, there are many new goodies in the latest version of Firefox, but one of the best new features is the ability to design your own extensions based on your own preferences. With more on this and uh, how to get this done from Radiant Core, Michael Glenn is here. Hello, Michael. Nice to meet you. Well, nice to meet you. So Radiant Core, as we learned uh, moments ago from Jay, uh, did a lot of the new user interface for Firefox 2. You're going to show yes. us some stuff in Firefox 2. That's correct. So, I mean, I've been a longtime Firefox fan. Um, we've all been Firefox fans at the we office. Tell we everybody use it. to I use it. I was on Windows before I even switched to Mac. Yep. And one of the great features that we love is that it has extensions. And yes. extensions are the ability for any user to program against Firefox and extend it in any way they'd like. Yeah. And they've come up with hundreds of different extensions, probably going over thousands now. And so what I thought I'd do today is uh, show you some of my favorite extensions that I've used. These are a few of my favorite extensions. And also show you uh, search engine add-ons, which are also a different type of extension. All right, all right. We only have a few minutes now, so. so uh, for users that want to extend Firefox, they can either go to addons.mozilla.org. They're right. actually working on a newer version of this site. Cool. Top secret, not, not out yet. Or the other easy way is to click on Tools, Add-ons, and they'll get a listing of the current add-ons. A couple of them come. Are they changing the name from ex add-ons to extent extensions to add-ons? So add-ons sort of covers extensions and themes. I see. And search engines. Okay, so anything you would add on to. Yeah. Okay. It's a little different from plugins, but that's the basically idea. if they're programming against okay. Zool, which is the right. extensible user layout. Right. Um, so you can see I've got a few of uh, of my favorite ones in here. It's quite easy. All you have to say is click on Get Extensions. That'll take you to the Mozilla add-on site, and you can search for your favorite ones there. We've done a lot of extensions on the show. I mean, we just love the extensions. So I've installed a couple that I like. The first is uh, Forecast Fox. And Forecast Fox sits just at the bottom of your Firefox in your status bar. It gives you the current weather. And it could also give you the extended forecast, so you know exactly Very handy. what the weather is like outside. It's great for programmers that are a little sheltered. <laughs> like never get yeah. outside, yeah. Uh, as a developer, I love to use the web developer toolbar. So that appears right at the top. 
and allows you to take a look at your, your various uh, components when you're developing pages. So if you're doing CSS, oh, it allows you to see cool. what the layout's like. This gives you an idea of what you can do with Zool. I mean, you really have exactly. complete control over the user interface. You do, you do. And um, one more here, we've got Adblock. Adblock is... Uh, That's a must-have. I like Except it. Except when you're visiting my sites. Oh, exactly. <laughs> then please turn off Adblock. So I find, that, I find that when I go to sites where the advertising just gets too it's much and too in your face, yeah. you can click on Adblock and uh, you can choose which components to block. Yes. Now one of the great new features that uh, Jay alluded to in the earlier segment is that we have an enhanced search engine integration. And so you can see all the different search engines that you can add here. Um, you can also go to manage search engines. You can add on some get more. more yeah. And they've got some fantastic ones available. I like uh, the Food Network one, and I like <laughs> the Delicious one, and Flickr. Um, one of the other uh, things you can do is when you've got Google selected, um, it has find ahead. So this is kind of neat. If you start, you start typing, typing, so if we say a G4, it immediately goes to Google and pulls the latest. This suggestions. is not from stuff you've typed previously. This no, is actually this is just from Google. Google directly. And so it really makes it a lot faster wow. to uh, to find things that you're wow, looking that's, for. And that did happen very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So that requires the cooperation of, uh, of Google to do that. That's I right. see you have another thumbnail extension. Right. So we have a Google plugins extension as well, uh, or Google preview, sorry, that shows me uh, exactly what the websites that's look like before you go. Yeah. One great new feature that we've uh, utilized on our website, if you go to the Radiant Core blog, um, is that you have the ability now to integrate your own website search within Firefox. So when we go to the Radiant Core blog, you'll notice that there's a little glow effect that happens next to the Oh yeah, what's that? Search. So when I click on it, you'll see that the Radiant Core blog oh. search comes up as a custom search. It makes engine. it very easy if there's sites you go to a lot, to, to like Dig, for instance, just to add that search right exactly. away. Wow, that's very cool. And so you can add that in, and that adds the ability for you to then search Radiant Core it's blog, so if I say Firefox. There might be a few entries get, there. <laughs> exactly, and you get right to it. That's really neat. So it's a fantastic way of, of integrating your website with uh, Firefox. You and guys really have done the experience. such a good job. If people haven't yet upgraded to Firefox 2, I think it's a good time to do it. Be to go to get fire right now. Go to getfirefox.com and get the latest version. As we tape this, it's not quite out yet, but we're assuming it will be out by the time you see this. Mm -hmm. If it's not, it's still in beta. Keep checking back because it will Talk be out way. any minute now. Michael Glenn and Radiant Core have been doing a lot of the work on the graphics and the user interaction design for the latest Firefox upgrade. Read more about them at RadiantCore.com. Add their blog search to your Google. Or get more info from our show notes at CallForHelpTV.com. We're going to wrap up this show in just a few minutes. Stay here. We'll be right back. I was just talking with Callie about her modeling career. I didn't know you did that. That's kind of fun. Oh, yeah, a little while. For magazines, uh, catalogs, that kind of um, thing? Some German magazines and some some hair salons, <laughs> you know, oh, the big fun. posters. That they did hair? You did a lot of hair stuff? Yeah. So if you're like walking down the street and you look in the window of a hair salon and you say, wait a minute, that's Callie. I doubt any of it's still up. <laughs> <laughs> it is Callie. You can catch more Callie Lewis at geekbrief.tv and she'll be back here tomorrow and for the next few weeks. She's very kindly consented to fill in for us. We really You've kindly asked it. me. It's so nice. <laughs> so nice to have you. If you've got a question for us, a comment, a suggestion, go to our website. We've actually got a link there, ask a question. We can't answer all of them, of course. We get far too many to send personal emails, but we'll get as many of you as we can on the show. Remember, if you've got a problem with your personal confuser, don't whine, don't moan, don't yelp, just call, call for help. help. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.